Uh, welcome everybody to tonight's episode of oh, Profound States. Uh, as always, your guest is Charles Michael Beaver, Mike. Uh, and tonight we have Scott Varden. Uh, Scott, give us the briefest bio you can possibly sum up about who you are. Okay. So, um, born in, in one of the Tri Lakes, uh, Tupper Lake in the middle of the Adirondacks. Um, my father was the first sergeant of the one of the first mass units, the 815th. Uh, so you can understand being brought up by a first sergeant, uh, even though it was a reserve unit, he was a World War II vet. So my indoctrination was, I would say, not normal compared to the, all my friends, but I wouldn't trade it for a minute. Um, so uh, I, my introduction into the world, uh, <clears throat> I have had so many strange things at a young age that I never could explain to the point where I just would pass it off as, well, that's it, you know, until the 15th of September, 2014. I had, uh, it was late night because of a case I was working on and I had two really good cops from different agencies with me. We walked out of the house deciding what was going to be done. And uh, we were in the middle of the lawn, and it was about 2.45 in the morning. The lead man, big guy from the sheriff's department, says, oh, my God, look at the sky. Everything seems so close. Well, that's exactly what it looks like when they fold space. So because of the site being such an incredible site, you're just frozen. I mean, you're just looking at this site that is just unbelievable because as one of them said, it, it feels like you can reach, you can reach up and touch a constellation. At that time, I had no idea what I was looking at. So we're just marveling it. And the guy from the pot PD behind me says, listen, listen to the coyotes. They don't talk like that. They're running around whining. Now, I'm, I've always been an outdoors person, so I know the routine with coyotes. Um, and so I look up at the moon and I point at the moon. I said, look, I said, it's not even a full moon. That's when they gather and talk. I said, because it was a fourth quarter moon. So I said, what the F is that planet doing next to the moon? There was a big round spherical thing next to the moon which was causing the moon to almost look like a full moon, but you could clearly see it was projecting something, some type of energy. But again, we were so just amazed by the sky. The other guy said to me, I don't know, but what's the matter with the coyotes? Honest to God. So we marveled. And then finally, they both looked at me and they said, Scott, something is not right. And we're getting the F out of here. So I said, okay, see you tomorrow. But I don't know. I guess it was just the way it was supposed to be. So I, they leave. I go in the house, turn off the outdoor lights, and I come back out, stand next to the corner of the house. As soon as I looked up at that planet next to the moon, uh, oop, whatever it was projecting, which I know now for a fact is plasma, it shut it off. And the second it shut it off, the most beautiful red, I will send you the pictures, rectangular starship popped out of the wormhole that was created because they project plasma using the Mandelbrot set torsion effect to create a wormhole. And that's how you fold space. And our friend, Mr. Einstein, did say space is a fabric. It can be folded. Don't think he's not on the list uh, of the 150 because he is. So... Um, wow. And next thing I know, I'm floating in the air on the right side of the ship. And they made me study the device, the only device that protrudes from that ship. I can, 
I can draw it. I mean, I can engineer it. That's how it's in my mind. And that device came that and has got an art. It's got a, a like a turning articulate point on the left side of the ship center, and this arm that comes out, and then there's like a ninety, but there's a little nub on top of the ninety, and the arm comes down and it sits on this plate. Now this plate has the same curvature as this small stub wing, which is defined by the uh, the ISS guys because they took a picture of it recently when it came back. And, and I got the picture, imagine that. So, I mean, I described it exactly perfectly the way they did in 214 and it's written and it's dated. So, so you know, I, 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 I just can remember the sea in my mind, like a movie, this. Next thing I know, I'm drawn to the ship, and that was it. That's all I remembered from that point. And then, I don't know how much longer, but it was a while, I'm standing back where I stood before they took me up. So I, and, and, the, and the ship moved, and it parked itself a little bit in the northeast sky and stayed there. So I run back in the house, I wake up my wife, and I said, it's called out, get dressed. You got to see this, it's amazing. And I go to, to uh, wake up my kid and his uh, fiance in the other room. And I, I mean, they couldn't wake up no matter what I did. I pushed them off the bed, I might have nudged them a little bit with my feet. They weren't, they weren't intended to see that. Otherwise, otherwise they wouldn't have taken the beating that I, got, that I gave them to try to wake them up. But uh, so my wife and I go out there and I said, look at it. And she goes, oh my God, that's beautiful. Now here's what they did. This was verified to me at a meeting at Fort Drum because I was told to go see the boys down at Drum. A lot of friends in 10th Mountain Division all the way back to the original tents. And um, I, uh, they, when they were coming, they were coming quite a bit, trust me. I mean, every single night for not just the, the red ship, that only came three times in 214. But there were other ships, and I've got photographs of those. So uh, they um, they were going on full alert, and the base was closing down because they thought it was an alien invasion. That's their words, not mine. That's what they told me. Well, I said, I said to them, well, I said, you saw them stop trying 12 times, right? They said, yes, sir. I said, and you saw before they did that, they folded space to get here. They said, yes, sir. So I said... Exactly. What do you have in this base that can match that shit? <laughs> and then they realized, you know, that this technology is so far beyond what we can imagine that, no, we don't have anything to do that. Yeah, we got the particle beam. I know the guy who got the gift for the particle beam. He's a president at Clarkson University now, and he's mad at me, but that's too bad. But the whole point is, that's how we knock them down. You can't knock these guys down, trust me. According to the records that we have, I'll provide you a copy. They come from the KBG Smirsh Division. That was a special unit that dealt with aliens. Okay? So the Soviet Union falls apart. And so they left everybody out in the cold. You know, I think this guy was in Portugal or Spain or something. And you know when you have to eat, you have to eat. And you have to feed your kids and pay the bills. But you're not going to pay check from Moscow. What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to survive. So you're going to sell some documents, okay? So, uh, and so those documents, I have the unedited and the edited version. You can get the edited version on Kindle, but trust me, most of it's there. What they edited out in back in 35 when they visited Majevac, they edited out his message, okay? They did that for a reason. They didn't want people to know what that message said. I can give you that message in writing because I got a copy of it. The thing is, why did they call them the 217s, the 222s, when they knew that, that it wasn't them? So during their years of this, you know, collecting this data and everything, they encountered several different alien species and every single one of them told them the same exact thing. And I tell you what they are, you'll, you'll get the copies. Okay, number one is she is the message. When, when we ask them about the source or God, every one of them, she is the message. 
to me, it's always made sense, but that's just me. The other thing is, they told us basically, um, hey, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a little problem coming in the in the sky here because it happens on a punctuated basis. And you can't really, no one has the exact timing or whatever, but let's tell you this, from 217 to 22, that's when the inbound binary system is going to have effect on your Earth. And here's basically, I got to put it in simple forms, but I'll give you the copy. Basically, what they said, if you guys don't get your shit together, uh, it's not going to be a good time, Okay. Now, we've had prophecy, the end of the world, and all this shit, and all these different things. But, you know, if, if you're a, a good researcher, a good investigator, there's tons of information out there that will prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that we belong to a binary system at the minimum. It could be trinary, as far as I know, but I know definitely binary. Now, the pioneer probes back in the day were sent out to see what was perturbating the planets in the outer solar system in the northwest direction towards Orion. And when they got out there and all the data came in about, you know, tugging forces and all this stuff, gravity. Uh, by the way, gravity is electrical attraction. I don't know whoever came up with the theory they taught us in school, but it's all about it. Wall Thornhill's group, we live in an electric universe. So, I um, I had known about these things because I have had, for some strange coincidence, knew the the guy from Perkin Elmer who uh, was a project manager that built the Hubble's. Okay, um, I, I know a lot of I, I had a friend that his grandfather was a Supreme Court judge, his dad was CIA. He interviewed. Years ago, he interviewed me in a green in a greenhouse, and he said, uh, "He said, I said, why in a greenhouse?" He said, "Son, if you can't cultivate plants, how do you expect to cultivate people?" Boy, was he right. That's my love. I have my own greenhouse. I've had it for three, four years, and I grow everything, dwarf, uh, all of my dwarf fruits, everything. It's just strange. Why? Um, and but the, the the point is, okay. They came in 35 with another gift because Egon's gift was colloidal attachment, and that's why NASA paid for the $85 million building at Clarkson. Center for Advanced Materials Processing. That's why we can keep life viable on the space station. So at the 214 graduation, we discussed what both of us knew. Okay? And so, fine. I mean, I knew he was on the list, but I always knew there was something special about that man. So um, <clears throat> before that, two days after the third visit, November 2014, I, um, oh, during this time, I'm serious, it was every single night. And, and the guys in life flight at the airport even got a hold of me and said, Scott, what's going on? All these lights. I said, they're not lights, they're orbs. Uh, just so many people who witnessed it that didn't want to tell other people, but they knew that to me, they could tell me. And so there were tons of witnesses. They witnessed it at Fort Drum. Somehow my wife was in a class, a functional nutritional medicine class, with a lady in South Carolina that witnessed it. Okay? Because when you fold space and it's unmistakable. And, and, and um, so, so let me, I want to get in how they, 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 I told you about the Mandelbrot set torsion effect, okay? Now, according to every alien that's ever, ever been interviewed by any agency, um, they, they'll talk about this group of the guys who fold space, but they all say they're the only ones who can do this. They're the only ones that can fold space. Well, you know what? We know for a fact they live 13.2 billion light years from us. Think about that. 13. How, even if you travel the speed of light, wow. No, they fold space, and it's the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, Jodie Foster's movie, Contact, 
but she met her father on the beach. And that sky, that strange sky, that's what it looks like. Now, how did I, I'm not a movie guy, but how did I, why did I watch that and remember that, you know, and then witness it myself? So, so back to that night. So we stood there, but you see when they stopped time, they took Laura up. OK, it's not it, it wasn't her first time, but uh, but we didn't realize it until I think I sent you her CV. Copy of her CV. If I haven't, I will. When you read that, you will understand because they've already shown me and, and I'll, I'll explain it to you and how they did it and um, what she is going to discover. So um, because without her discovery. Maybe we can fold space. Maybe we can stop time. We can if they're smart, if they smarten up. But to travel from star to star and explore a star's own solar system and area and everything like that, we're talking, we're talking time that we, we can't fathom, okay? And there's only one way you're gonna survive. And what she discovers, and I'll tell you, they took me up. This gentleman met me. He had a brown robe. He almost looked that guy in, in Star Wars. I had the brown robe there, whatever his name was. I swear to you, it was the oldest looking face I've ever seen in my life or anything that old. And he took me by the hand and he brought me into this room. It, to me, it looked like the room was made of white quartz, but all the table and the and there's a there was a like a separator thing. Everything was looked like stainless steel to me. So he sits down and well, first he pulled out a chair. I sat down. Then he goes to the other side of the table and he sits down. And I, I just was so um, I guess uh, captivated by what he looked like that I just couldn't say anything. Of course, in the room was so incredibly beautiful that it just, you know, your senses are there's so much quickly that it's hard to uh, focus on one thing. So finally, he talked, talked to me a little bit and then he, then he took his robe off. And when he took his robe off, this man and woman carrying a tray with a vial and a syringe came into the room. Now she had some stuff to clean his arm. And so she rolled up his sleeve on the left side and she took her solution and she rubbed it and she drew up her vial and she injected him. And as within seconds, as I sat there, that antiquity of life turned into a young man. Okay. Now, wow. Okay. So what am I seeing here? And then because they can read your mind. Oh, it's happened so many times. Then they showed me. They showed me who was with her. And I know who was with her. Someone from a past life that's in our lives now. Another doctoral student, but Laura's all fun with her doctorate. So, but this one's still working on it. Um, and, and if you want that story, it goes way back to that thing that felt that the Baltic Sea anomaly. I go way back to there. I know the whole story. So, and I know why this girl's in our life, but I'll tell you that later. Let's get this finished. I'm sorry, but um, okay. So, so I see this and then they give me the information and where to look to find actually today to find these facts that this really exists. So, they send me back. I mean, when you're taken every night for, I don't know, this went on from, for, actually the first one was uh, with St. Patrick's Day when I recognized my father-in-law's, my daughter's father-in-law's face on the wanted poster for the Garden Museum. Um, the, uh, um, then the other one was September, oh, that's when they took the, uh, no, that's when I, put together the case and sent it to Washington. But the uh, the other one was in, um, there was another one, but it wasn't with the, the guys, the 217s, who are really the messengers. 
because they don't look the same. Trust me. Um, so they took me up in July. Then I thought that I got raped, to be honest with you, um, because before they sent me back, they knew what I was thinking. They were laughing at me. And these guys weren't human, but they were beautiful. They all had green surgical surgical gear on and they all had glasses and they had the little green cap and everything. And um, the guy in the middle has got this long silver oblong rod. I've heard stories about that, but I sure. And uh, the other two, they got their arms around him and they're laughing at me. And then the bright light that they use for their technology of, you know, like Star Wars with the uh, transporter ship. That's what they use light. Boom. I'm next. I popped in my body. And I wake up screaming. This is when we were at Clarkson in a townhouse. And the kids come in from the other room. And, What's the matter, Dad? What's the matter? Because I never had nightmares and wake up. Well, I, I didn't want to tell them. And they said, you woke us up, Dad. You have to tell us. Because you were screaming, man. I said, OK, here's the deal. I had a nightmare. That three dogs effed me in the anus. Okay, that's what I told them. But not not exactly, but you know, you know what I guess. So in any event, they laughed at me. Yeah, that's a nightmare, Dad. Okay. No, it wasn't. As I found out after the November visit from a uh, from the number one forty nine in the enlightened list at a funeral that um, oh, they visited you three times. They only visited everyone else once. They took a DNA sample from you, Scott. I said, why did they do that? In case something happens to you, you'll have a 38-year-old body to incarnate into. Your exact words. Now, when I, someone blurted out to me years ago where the paintings were from the Garden Museum, that person does not remember saying that. How did I know where they were? So you see, they work through people like this. I found this to be so true because so many people have walked up to me in my life out of the blue and told me something. And it turned out to be something that solved a huge major case. And I never could put two and two together. Why did this person who I didn't know and didn't even know what I do walk up to me and tell me something that he should not have, okay? So I, I, there's no doubt in my mind because this has happened several times and it's happened just recently. So, so that's, that's the, you know, that's what happened. The pineal gland gave me the sight uh, and, and all enlightened people have the same traits, okay? You know a lie when it's spoken. You know a lie when you read it. You um, you have this this vision beyond the normal field of vision, and um, the injection was monatomic gold and um, some type of a rash, red crush gem, which I think was the one that the group in Atlantis have. In fact, I know it is because um, as crazy as this sounds, uh, that injection also gives me uh, several other kind of fun things. Uh, one was scary, but I got over it. I can, I can access the Akashic records, and I'm not kidding you one single bit. I had a discussion today with another investigator, uh, and I, uh, you know, they ask, well, how do you know, and, and this and that. I mean, I, even catching them uh, doing bad things. Um, I said, haven't you ever thought why I've always been like a mile ahead of you guys? I said, yeah, what's the matter with you? I mean, don't you think it's strange that uh, I would find out that that's something that you should have been doing? And uh, I send you something that says, well, if you do this, here's how we're going to prove that you shouldn't have done this. And uh, oops, that solved that real quick. No, they, they, they speak through you. They can speak through you. We have that ability. It's been hidden from us. We've been poisoned with fluoride, um, you know, with, with, just, with just being told shit that's not true. 
And, and so a child has the same abilities to see beyond our ranges. That's why they have friend, invisible friends. And they, uh, oh, another thing, cats. You ever see a cat walk around the house trying to look at something and, and talk to it? Because they can see it too. And so we have a truncated vision and hearing and frequencies. And we know lots of stuff on both sides of that truncation exists because we have ways of testing it. And we also have ways of actually using it. But your eyes can't. Okay. That injection, the sight, gave me the ability to go beyond that. It also gave me the ability to, when I, when I, I, I have to work at it, and there are certain conditions, and, and it took me a while to find the keys. Uh, I found it in a few books, and, um, but, but, but by these things in itself, in books, if you, if you don't understand what they're saying, it's easy to think it's something else, like totem poles, right? So um, it took me a while to, 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 to discover that um, under the right conditions, and it's in a meditation state, that I can enter into another dimension. Now, I know people who say you're crazy. I don't really care. I love it. And um, it's real. We know there's more more dimensions um, and, and we all have these same powers. It's just that they have to be expressed. You have to have certain conditions to be able to use them. And I I have been teaching people best I can. Um, so the first time uh, and it involves salt water, warm salt water in the bathtub. OK, um, a few other things I don't want to get into because I don't want to start up bad thing but in any event and so so when I first noticed it it was like I could put my hands in the other dimension and I and I brought them back I mean it was like what it was almost like you could feel the fabric or whatever it is so, so then I said well <laughs> I said to my I had I talked to myself I said to myself well there must be a reason why this I can do this and so I did I put my hands in and then I just kept on spreading it and boom Oh my God, it, it can make me tear up now because the people in my life, my best friend was killed when his teriacal hang glider hit that effect. I, I discovered later and finally told his family what happened to him. When the winds come in off the Pacific with the different mountain ranges, when they get to Lake Tahoe, they're rolling. Snap, that roll was so strong. And how I discovered what happened is because when the glacier started melting, they found all these old Air Force or Army planes in these glaciers in the Sierras. They all had one thing in common. The wires, you know, for the, the run back, that for the uh, tail rotor and all that, snapped. Because when you hit a rotor, I don't care what you got for a cable, okay, all that force of that rotor, that wind, which is a tremendous amount of force, will throw the tails down or whatever and snap those cables and you're going down. And that's what's happened. And that will happen to my friend Billy Gould. So <clears throat> after I found that, I called his sister and I told her. Her husband, um, I've known all my life. He was Air Force, good pilot, big man. My wife is Lieutenant General Leroy Manners' um, niece. Her, her grandpa was Captain Harold Manner, the last U.S. Air Force Sabre jet pilot to die in a crash at what is now Fort McGuire, Joint Base McGuire, across the street from her 10-year-old mother. My mother, her dad went down, died, killed him, okay? So, <clears throat> So it gives me a better understanding of family dynamics, I guess. Um, it's all related. This is what I'm trying to get people to wake up, take a look at their lives. We've all had strange occurrences that we can't explain. Well, 
I'm the guy who did all the paving stone at Disney Universal, all that. Okay. Can't tell you why I was working under and doing that, but that's what I did. I discovered them early. I got the Lake Placid Olympic contract, and from there it went crazy. I got sick of the traveling because there's no money up where we live. I was doing all the corporate work in Connecticut and New England and New York area and all that, Jersey, and um, all the state DOT work. And uh, so I said to my ex, or my ex now, um, I said, um, let's go to Disney World. I want to talk to Disney about this because I know they got expansion coming and, and I know the problems with asphalt and concrete and that high heat. So I met with Bill Cohen and um, it just was magic. Okay, that direct bus drop facility. I can't say it's my work, okay? Uh, I sold the job. I basically helped Bill with the design and the whole nine yards. I always do with that people. Uh, and um, I, uh, I hired all guys off the farm in Northern New York in our general area. And I got them into the union. And they made more money than they ever, ever thought of making. And they were housed in Marriott's. And I gave them 150 bucks a week to eat with, too. And I took them out to dinner at least once a month at places like Leon's in New Haven, Marinacci's in Port Chester. Um, and there's another one in, uh, no, Mar yeah, Marinacci's in Port Chester. And um, Rugentino's in New Haven. Oh, you talk about good Italian restaurants. So in any event, what I'm trying to say is I took care of my people. I wasn't greedy, okay? Never in my life have I been greedy. And that is all part of it. So in any event, <clears throat> we did not, all, the year before we did the Orlando Arena because of Bill Cohen, uh, I didn't want the job, I was a consultant, but <laughs> when I gave him what I found out, uh, that they weren't going to make it in time, um, I, I ended up getting getting the work. Um, and and <laughs> at the finish of the job, I did not charge them for a favor they asked because they didn't have the manpower to unload the trucks of seats that goes into the arena, nor did they have the men or the tools to install them. And I asked my men, even though I just gave them two weeks paychecks and said, you got a week's paid vacation and passes to Disney World. So enjoy Florida because it was about 30 below up here. And, um, and then Kurt Kotzen tapping me on the shoulder. He says, Scott, we got a problem. And so we solved the problem for him. I never build them. We start Magic Kingdom a year later. Okay, January 2nd. And we're, we got equipment there and everything, and we're just having a look at job meeting. And uh, the gopher for the uh, arena job shows up. He says, Scott, we're waiting for you. And I said, what? What are you talking about, John? And he says, uh, don't you know? I said, no, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? He said, my mom was a city councilwoman. She ran for county executive. They floated the IDA bonds for Universal. They told Universal, you're going to do their work and don't argue with them. Okay? So I did. We went, picked up the blueprints. I had to get a whole bunch more people. And that's how I became friends with Steven Spielberg because I did all his work and he gave me complete artistic freedom, something that no one's ever been given from him. But the point is, it's not me, okay? It's the principles, okay? We did our work the way it was supposed to be done. We didn't cheat people. You don't go from Lake Placid. Actually, I started in Potsdam, New York, and did two jobs, and the next thing I'm doing, and I'm working for the Commissioner of Labor, so that was a problem. So in any event, the point I'm trying to make, okay, everybody said, why are you being visited? Perhaps, just perhaps, it might be because I've tried to live my life a certain way. I've made mistakes, but one thing I've never done is cheat my fellow man. Okay, so people ought to think about this. So back to that night. Um, they took Laura up during the one of the stop times, but why did they do it 12 times? There's, there's, there's an answer to that, but you got to find it. 
So, um, after it was done, we went in the house, went to bed, and got up the next morning, and uh, never even talked about it. And my wife's in the kitchen making French toast, and I'm uh, at the table where I like to work, and computer on, getting ready to do something, and I get a request from a Zoom call. Sure. I don't know how far you want to go this, but it's all related, sir. It's all related. Whoever called me from a certain agency from a certain country who we have supposedly we're, we're good friends with, um, they wanted to Zoom with me. I said, sure, okay. I said, what's up? Uh, we're out in LA raising money. So oh, yeah, I recognize uh, the guy in the girl's face. And I thought for a minute, I said, well, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I know what you did after Munich. I said, what's up? Yeah, those tunnels. Every one of them had a false bottom full of explosives. So you can imagine what happened when they put people in, when they dragged people in there, okay? So I said, so you're going to raise some money and go find them? Yeah, okay. So I'm thinking, why are you telling me this? And then I remembered something. I remembered the guy who saved my life in 69 when I took three rounds, one of them right here in the head. One here, the only one that hurt, the one that went underneath the vest into my stomach. I was 96 pounds for two years. So, in any event, Dr. Charles Barney, Israeli Mossad major, did all the 76 burn cases. Why was he in Burlington? GE Vulcan gun factory, because the Russians gave the Egyptians those Vulcan cannons and Wow, I almost cost the war for the Israelis, so they needed them, and they got a license from GE. And they had to send their engineers and someone to maybe repair somebody if they got hurt, and their own security people to Burlington. Why was Dr. Charles Bynum, plastic surgeon, on call when I was medevaced into Burlington? Okay. You can't see a scar on my face except the pin. And I had a hole like that. We bonded, saw each other for years. Last time I talked to him was when the first date I had with Dr. with Laura. And uh, she met him and it just was great. He died a couple of months later. Okay. His presence was no accident there. What happened to me was no accident there. So. <clears throat> Everything's connected. How the hell did they know who visited me that night? You want to know why? Because it was the female who stayed on after the guy had to leave. She said, Mr. Barton, I have to send you something. Now, I assumed they knew my ability with facial recognition. I can take a face, take a youth picture, and I can match him up. I don't know how or why, but it's just what I do. Done it all my life. That's how I solved the Garden Museum robbery. But the thing is, um, they gave me the list of 150 light people, okay, enlightened people. They did. How did they know? I can tell you how they knew, because all those 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 Dead Sea Scrolls there, the Essenes wrote that they found, they're under the tightest security in the world in Israel. Okay, and what's in there? basically says what I'm going to tell you about the aliens, okay? I know that for a fact. That's why they hide them. Okay, there's so much life in the universe, it's it's just unimaginable. I have met way over that, way. I stopped counting at 200 different things. Some strange looking creatures, but none of them ever, ever made me feel anything of a lower species or or less love. I mean, the feeling of love when you're with them is just mind blowing. So, <clears throat> yeah, been going on for a long time. I think we we all know this. Um, how can how can we be the only life in the universe? I mean, it's so with what we can see now, uh, um, just with well with with uh, with that new telescope and everything. It's just it's amazing, and you see, this is all timed. OK, they're offering us. They're, they've offered us the keys to the universe, the keys to the universe, like 
Nikola Tesla said, the 369. Everything I have to prove everything about folding space and how much power and all this stuff, it's all math. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And it's not that complicated. But we like to complicate shit, I guess. So, so this goes on. I'll send you the picture. But this goes on night after night. Different type of craft and everything. Different beings. Conversations like, oh, yeah. I remember we did that 2,000 years ago. So not like that. But what I'm saying, is they were so comfortable that I had to have known them. Because you can't. I, I can't, as a human, be comfortable right away with someone and share things and talk about things that most people wouldn't even imagine. And, and, and uh, if I hadn't known them, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a strange thing. But boy, are there some beautiful beings, I can tell you that. <laughs> wow. And obviously, with their superior technology, if they were evil... I don't think we would be getting away with a lot of stuff, including destroying this planet with our pollution and our greed and all the, you know. I, I can't fathom a mind not being able to comprehend that what we're doing with our planet and the elements, uh, the resources in it, that there's not a finite point where it stops. And um, that's what we're faced with, you know. Um, uh, and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. There's too much technology withheld from us, from the general public. And um, it's, let's put it this way. Things get a change. Or I can tell you right now, the message I was given, it's game over. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. We're all mortal spiritual beings. So you're not really dying. OK, some of us have been here a lot of times. Me, I know for a fact this is 22. OK, I know my past lives and I, I don't want to get into those because people some people know the truth, especially the people who did the QHHT and have a copy of the disc and were allowed to share it with some other people in that organization. And that's Dolores Cannon's wow. organization. And they have contacted me when they have found something that I had said years ago. Okay. So it's all connected. So, so, so yeah, I, th that's the book, uh, three ways of volunteers in the new earth by Dolores Cannon. We have all her books, read them all. Okay. Well, there's a story right there for you. Bill Tompkins backed it up in his second interview with Terry Cassidy uh, before he passed away. So, um, he also talked about the blue light beings, the beautiful blue light beings. Yeah, they are. They are beautiful. So, so this goes on night after night. And I mean, it just was night after night. Now, the second night, I get told to go outside. I go outside. And this is what I witness. From horizon to horizon, nothing but angels. It's, you just... There was not the sky, half the sky from directly overhead to as far as the horizon would go. There was nothing but angels. Okay. They exist. I got a few pictures of some too. Um, they exist, but it's kind of like they exist in a higher frequency. And so when they have to come and do their thing and help us out or whatever, um, they have to drop their, their vibrations and everything. And I got a picture of how that goes. It's beautiful. And um, and then they they appear, at least what I see them as. It's just like we were told in, in at church or in catechism or in the Bible, whatever. Wings, you know, beautiful creatures. White, the whole nine yards, a robe. And there's some other guys, believe it or not. Um, and I've seen them more than once. Uh, they have these beautiful robes, but they got a blue and gold piping white piping all around the edges of the robe. Okay. Serious and absolutely amazing. Um, but it exists. It's just that normally you can't see it. So that's what I was witnessing. And I was just blown away standing there like frozen. And all of a sudden someone blew a trumpet 
At least I heard it. Five came down to me, three adults, two young ones. Immediately, I knew the three adults, okay, in my life, family, my mom's family. And trust me, they would be angels for what they had to put up with. But, um, and then there were two young ones. Immediately, I knew one small one, and that was little Johnny Turco, who was hit and killed by a state truck running across the road to Abdella's Market in Tupper Lake because his older brother, Jimmy, Uncle Jimmy, who's now passed, went down to the store, and little Johnny wanted to go with him. Yeah, I can, re I can remember like a video in my mind, which I described to my family at an at a Easter dinner one time uh, when I was a teenager. Exactly everything about the funeral, the house, because they used to wake people in the houses back then. The house had been renovated, the whole nine yards, except I explained everything to them and they all looked at me like, a, well, someone must have told you that. I said, really, who told me that? Then they realized that I did remember that. So that was a little Johnny, but the other one, God, I was stumped, I was stumped, I was stumped, and then finally it came to me. My first girlfriend in Tupper Lake, her father was the manager of Pedago Mulligan factory in Rome, New York. They built the logging equipment. And they would come up for a week or 10 days every summer for the Woodsman's Field Day, which was the biggest thing in Tupper Lake. It was amazing back then. I mean, we had big, the biggest law mill, uh, saw mills in the country back then on the East Coast. I mean, it's just, that was the main industry in the Adirondacks. And so, um, I don't know, I saw her, little guy, both kids. And uh, it just, there was something special. And so uh, she brought me into their company tent and everything. We talked and we introduced me to her parents and everything. And they said, would you like to help Wanda give out drinks to the Coca-Cola and, you know, Orange Crush uh, to our guests? That's sure. So, so, we, so I did that all week long and everything. And then, you know, at the end of the the last day of Wednesday Field Day, you know, they pack they pack up and everything's gone the following week. And then I get a letter from little Wanda and she, she asked she asked me, and I we were young, because I had to bring the letter to my mother. I said, What's she talking about? She asked me to be her boyfriend. <laughs> okay. So my mom says, Yeah, that's all right, Scott. She says, you know. I'll help you write her letter. So she did. And we conversed. Okay. That was August. We conversed on a weekly basis all the way to mid-spring. And it stopped. Nothing. I was devastated. Right? It was June's field day. I, I, I knew that their, the company was there and they were putting up their tent. And I get on, get on my bike. And I dangerously crossed the road and I went down because I was looking for Wanda. And, but her mother's there and her father. And when they saw me, I knew, I knew something happened because of looks on their faces. And I ran up to him and I said, where's Wanda? And she started crying. She picked me up, brought me into the, their private area. She sat down with me on her lap and she told me what happened to Wanda. She died of leukemia. Okay. That was Wanda. It was. So, yeah. So you can imagine all these things happening and um, then having something that emotional in your life happen. And definitely, I mean, what's more paranormal? You're looking at angels and you're looking at you're looking at people from your past life that have passed. Well, you can, you know. So, so this, like all this, things like this just kept on going on. My uncle died. I think it was the trooper one. Okay, before that, his older brother, my father met in New Guinea in World War II. They lived on the same street in Tupper Lake on extreme ends and never knew each other. They became lifelong friends and they ran that mass unit until they both retired. When my uncle Benny Chirko, according to his kids who were by his bedside, 
my uncle Benny Chirko was, they knew he, you know, he had cancer, he was, he, he, that he had minutes to live. Steve Chirko, who was a former trooper in Vermont, after he heard my stories, because I, like I said, I don't give a shit, I'll, I'm just telling the truth, I'll tell anybody. He said, Scott, I know you're, I know you're telling the truth. I said, why? He said, Scott, just before dad died, he sat up in bed. He pointed towards the bathroom door. He said, that's Kenny Barden. What's Kenny Barden doing here? And then back he fell. He was dead. Because it's your turn to transition. Okay. Someone is going to be there that you're going to be comfortable with. Because let me tell you. When you're out of this body and you think you're dead, it's happened to me several times, okay? Not very settling until you understand the message. The message is you, me, the dogs. They all have spirits in them. The dogs, the cats, all the animals. They get spirits in them because that's life, you know? Um, everything, is, everything is spirit, it, 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 but spirit is energy vibration. But uh, so so we're able to see and we're able to, you know, in 3D, touch solid metal, you know, table, whatever. OK, there's other D's. There's D's lower than us. And Mr. Johnson, when you leave 3D, you think you won the lottery. Because there's no feeling when you are out of this human body. I don't I don't want anybody to think that this is. Oh, maybe I should. Stop. No, you don't. You don't do this. What I'm saying is. The spirit, when you're out of the body in the spirit form, there's no judgment. And the feeling is what people describe, I guess, what they call heaven. But I have never felt anything like that in my life. Okay? So that's related because, see, I wouldn't have known this shit if, if those aliens wouldn't have visited me and then put all this stuff in motion. So, so now they start teaching me what a red orb means. So this is going on all fall. I talk to people, they come to me and ask questions in the area. Some other people that were visited also, but they didn't want other people to know this. That's the right. We go to Boston every Chris, after Christmas to visit my son and his, my grandkids. The first night, in 214, two days after Christmas, we're in Boston. We're in Maynard. They live. And uh, my, I'm, I'm on the computer doing what I had to do in one room. And my son waltzes in. He said, Dad, he said, you want to hear something crazy? I said, what? He said, Eva, my, my first grandchild, my granddaughter, she said, <clears throat> she asked me to ask you to take her for a walk. Just you and her, no one else, after dinner before she goes to bed. I said, that's funny. I said, where'd that come from? I said, I don't know. I said, tell her, sure. So after dinner, get the boots and the clothes on. We're halfway down the driveway. The picture of the ship that was above us, because I said, oh, Eva, look up. <laughs> and it, there, there it is, OK? Like I described it, which you'll get a picture of. Um, geez, why was that in the Boston Globe the next day? Because someone took a photograph of it. But let me tell you something. The government already knew. The government already knew about my visits because a project that I had been I had been working on since 2014 uh, kind of had to allow uh, access to all my electronic equipment, and um, I had to inform them that's no problem. You don't need a warrant or anything, guys, because I live in New York State. New York State law says it only takes one person to acquiesce. Really? Yeah. Okay, where'd you go to law school? They don't want to tell me anymore. So um, that's the law in New York State. So you don't have to hide anything. You don't even have to tell the person you're recording them. But you see the recording I got uh, about something. I'll send that to you privately. Um, so, so they knew everything because they heard everything. And they had people in the area that witnessed it. So, so, so I'm not telling tales. So 
as soon as Eva says, yeah, I see it, Pepe, it's beautiful, boop, we're up there. The only thing, they took us both desperately because I'm watching our bodies go on the walk with me, with the dog, and on the leash. And then after we get right back to the driveway, boom, we're both popped into our bodies. Eva runs right into the house and starts telling everybody what she just saw and experienced. And that didn't go over very well, trust me. But I'm standing there, dumbfounded, at the beginning of the driveway, you know, where the road hits the driveway, and this huge red orb comes floating down, sits right on the house. I've seen that before more than once and it included missing time so um so i'm i'm just, it's it's so gorgeous to see and then finally it goes bleep, it's gone but it went bleep about light speed up and so i walk in the house casually and get accosted by my son you know i can understand and he, he didn't because he i shared that with what was going on with him he didn't. He, he he didn't want me put putting that uh, crap in his daughter's head. I said, Jace, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say anything to her. She, uh, you got to listen to her, not me. So that was the end of it. Okay. Until the following year, when they did the same thing, we go out to dinner to get Chinese food the night of my grand my daughter in law's birthday. We're sitting at the bar, and I said. Jace, Jace, I got to talk about what happened last year because I, I didn't say anything to your daughter. And I almost fell off the chair because she said to me, I know, Dad. I said, you know? What do you mean? He said, well, after that happened, my grandson would wake up every night about 3 o'clock in the morning, roll in their bed, wake that, get out of his bed, well, his crib, go to their bed, wake him up, and telling him about the little gray men he's fighting in his bedroom. Well, this went on way too many times. So someone invests in those infrared baby cameras or whatever, baby monitors, whatever they are. And guess what my son and my daughter-in-law witnessed? Scott wasn't full of shit, okay? Now, the reason I'm saying this is because I know for a fact my father was visited, but he didn't understand what happened because they took a DNA sample from him and he also misinterpreted it. So now I know for a fact my dad was visited. I sure as shit know I am. My wife is. Um, and I know my grandchildren are. So what does that tell you? It's got to be something with our genetics. I don't know. You know, I'm a federally trained investigator, and I have been very, very uh, successful in, in, in some of the most uh, amazing cases uh, ever. And um, But you can't use your expertise where it needs to be used if you go to court and tell everybody what, as smart as you are, because your career's over with then. So, so I so I played the game and continued with it, but I've learned too much about uh, about everything with it. So, um, so now I get the paranormal thing, about, you know, and, and it's, so I had to I had to draw this. I had to bring the fact of the paranormal part and the alien part because I have been on ships with aliens where there's been physical contact. So I know, you know what I mean? I know that it's not like a, a projection or illusion, shit like that. And, and boy, I tell you, some of these ships are just amazing. But we, um, it just kept on going on and, and it's just, you just, you have no other choice but to accept it and get used to it, including getting taken at the Grand Canyon where the black helicopter showed up immediately, okay? Because I had two, three, four vehicles 
that followed Laura and I from Northern New York through meetings in New England to New Jersey, to Washington, D.C., to the Carolinas, to Texas, to Arizona, where finally one of, them, one of them was smart enough to acknowledge that I knew who they were and what they were doing. Okay? They missed, they got, they got screwed up about something just because Bonanno retired. He's now dead. He retired in the Phoenix area. They thought I was going there to see somebody. Actually, I was going to see my father-in-law who was dying. Okay? But I also had to go to the Hopis, which we spent three weeks with. Okay? Because I was given a message to give to them. And when I finally met, I met with the Indian agent right away. The first thing he wanted me to do is help him recover this piece of their art that was stolen and said, or it was, I haven't talked to him in a long time. It's in a, a museum in Paris. Apparently they want it. And I don't blame them. But um, so he hooks me up with uh, female elder leaders, or whatever. And, and so finally we get together and they said, the lady introduced herself and says, you know, I was told that I, uh, you have a message for us. I said, yes. She goes, what is it? I said, I was told to tell you that they're back. She looks at me and she goes, well, that makes sense. I said, why? She, because the lights return, the colored orbs. Absolutely beautiful things. Just amazing. So what the guys at the airport asked me, Scott. What are those lights? I'm talking red, green, blue, yellow, and white. Orbs, beautiful, streaking across the sky. They did that for a reason. Because we lived exactly halfway between the Homeland Security Northeast Border Electronic Protection Complex in Burke, New York, in the 10th Mountain Division headquarters at Fort Drum, New York. You don't think both those babies have plenty of equipment to see what was going on in the sky? They do. So, uh, and they witnessed it. But you see, we had to be there because A, Washington knows who the visitors are, the, the guys who came to Laura and I, okay? They know for a fact who they are because they know about Majeda, okay? They, um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I've been debriefed and, and um, because they know that I, I'll tell everyone, I don't care. But I've been debriefed and I told them everything and they know it. But I had a deal, <laughs> I had a deal with Comey and, and uh, that was part of the deal. You know, you got to keep us up, up to date. You see, Comey couldn't keep the deal and that's what happened with Louis III. So, what I'm trying to say is that everything happens for a reason. There's a relationship between the spiritual side and these guys that can travel all over the universe or travel between universes. And they can do that because they're like, I don't know, they're like Santa's elves in a simplistic way. Okay. There is a source, okay, and it's described in the documents I'll send you, but there is a source of everything. There's got to be, you know, and, um, but understanding this, we, we, I think part of purpose of life is, is, is figuring out what it is or, you know, or just figuring out life in general. Uh, but we get distracted. We're so easily distracted with all this material shit and, uh, and drugs and sex and uh, not that there were some, I, I wouldn't condemn drugs, you know, especially when you know the three guys who threw the cocaine in and who laundered the money. Um, but, you know, it was done. See, I, I can't condemn those people because they thought they were doing the right thing for a certain purpose. And it turns out, oh, geez, someone asked me today about that. I said, really? It's a conspiracy? So then why did the director of the CIA go to Watts and apologize to people in the Watts for creating a crack, crack epidemic? Okay, so, uh, and trust me, when they came home, they came to me first. 
and go home. And uh, they just wanted to make sure that, uh, that, that they'd be breathing tomorrow. So um, they're friends of mine. One has passed and, um, and they didn't do anything wrong. They're just doing what they were ordered to do. When you're a soldier, you're a soldier. So these guys traveling the universe, they give us gifts, okay? This gift, this gift is mind blowing as far as I'm concerned. Because I've researched all the documents. I've talked to some other aliens because they look just like you and I. And um, they all say the same thing. And I'm, I'm puzzled. Why would we be offered the way we are on Earth right now, the wars? You know, we've both been there. We know, we know what really goes on and why. Um, and you know, yeah, we want we care about ourselves and our families having everything and nice and everything. But we never think about uh, whose back it came off from or whose life uh, was sacrificed for it. But that's just part of life, and it's it's part of the lessons of life that we have to learn and understand. Because if we don't, we got to come back and until we do. And um, it's happened several times on Earth. Uh, Graham Hancock just got through uh, with his new series. It's on Netflix about cataclysms. So that was a no-brainer in high school for me. You can't Stop. have better, right? So it's all connected to what's coming. Okay, the aliens are here. There are hundreds of thousands of the most incredible, different, beautiful space traveling ships in our solar system right now, and people can see them with telescopes. You got a good one. So why are they here now? Okay. And here's what I've been told. Okay. There's two choices here. Okay. There's plenty of people on Earth who who are awake uh, and awakening, and they try to do the best they can. But we got some people that that just don't. They don't want to play fair, and uh, that's been the whole history of, of human of humanity. But the point is, at, at some point, you know, either this experiment of of genetic experiment of life on Earth, either has to produce something that's uh, of value, or they got to start all over again. Okay, and basically that's a message. Either you. You, we, we know better. I mean, we know people who have done certain things. I know that for a fact. And, um, and we didn't say anything uh, because, because maybe that's why we're still alive. But um, that's a message. And I wish I had something a lot better to say. But it's also written. It was written and given to the Russians. Okay? And it says... 217 to 222. That's when the basically, the, uh, to, I, I'll put it in blank terms. That's when the shit starts. In other words, if you get a volcano app or an earthquake app and you know Velikovsky's work, okay, Worlds in Collision, Earth and Upheaval, you say, wow, that looks like what he said. And he only just, he only just gave you what he read in documents at the same timeline all the way around the world. You know what? I, 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 why did they, why did they lead me to the Inuits in 95? Why do I have a collection of their art? And the, in the piece, the very first piece I got first, I'm gonna grab it and show it to you. Move, guys. This is a Inuit village in the Pacific Northwest. It's on the coast. Okay. Still fairly intact. It's just that it was made out of wood and it's hundreds, thousands of years, probably thousands of years old. But around that village are totem poles. And I can tell you why they're there. And this was on a mountain climb. It was funny that I met up with, with someone. Someone that I might have had past experience with that uh, probably worked for the same people. And um, 
decided to buy a house in Tupper Lake and just happened to be, because every time I go get my spring water, because we know what's in the water and we've tested it and we know it sits pure for five years. Why were they there? Why did they tell me about the house? And you know what? Because I knew the face. I looked at him, I said, so you know what totem poles are for? And he said, yes, sir, I do. And his wife turns to him, she goes, what? I'll tell you what totem poles are for. The last time the inbound binary system came through, Laura and I were mates in the Inuit village in the Pacific Northwest. We've been shown this in past life regression. As Mr. Velikovsky writes in his works, during these times when other heavenly bodies were traversing the inner solar system and earthquakes and volcanoes were terrible all over the earth, all of a sudden the Inuits stated that the sky came close to Earth. Therefore, I guess we weren't that bright back then. That's a joke. Um, therefore, we decided to put totem poles around our villages in case it happened again, our villages wouldn't get crushed. Now that makes sense. Why wouldn't you think that, not understanding what you're seeing, but being afraid of what you saw? But Mr. Velikovsky said, it must have been the volcanic ash in the sky. And I said, no, 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 I said, can't be. I said, hey, you never witnessed it, B. Um, here's a deal. If it's volcanic ash, what's the difference between that and clouds and snow or fog or rain where you don't see the sky? Because meaning the sky, seeing the sky is seeing the stars. And what they witnessed was our butts being saved because my friends there in the rest ship showed up and their star Bethlehem, which rises in the east, because they can only do this in the east, and I'll explain the mechanics of that, why, and it's very, it's, it shows how, why they are, I mean, it shows that they are so kind, so, so kind to us. Um, they saw the sky come close to earth. But you only can tell that is if you can see the stars come close to Earth, not not volcanic ash. Okay, so yeah, see that's why that's why I I bought that picture. I mean I I didn't know why, but now I do because I saw it and I read the story and their legends about it. So that means to me that there's hope. I know the system's inbound. Okay. I know, I mean, they do, everyone, anybody in the intelligence agency knows. I've been dragged into groups where they did, said, Scott, they only tell us what we need to know, but we know you know the truth and you'll tell us. And I said, yeah, I can tell you if, if you ask the right questions. And I do. Okay. So, because um, I care and I don't lie. I don't need to lie. Okay. If you've seen my work, uh, just, I mean, just, just the interlocking paper stone work. I mean, um, I got pictures and all that shit, but I don't go throw it in everybody's face. I don't care. You know, it was just something where I could express my form of art. Um, so that's, 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 that's what it is. Okay. Okay. Now, red orbs. That meeting that night at, in Maynard. Okay. Or that afternoon where the 45 of them asked me, okay? Now, I can name every one of them and where they came from. Some from industry, but they're kind of close tied to military. And uh, so after the meeting, I said to my friend, uh, you know, it's fourth quarter moon night, you're coming. And he said, yeah, we're gonna be watching. Well, okay, so we go home and the late night West Coast Bruins game and uh, Everybody else went to bed, and Jason and I are watching it, and all of a sudden the black helicopter is, and we're talking a half hour. And Jay said, Dad, I said, yeah. He said, you can get their communication, break in their communications. I said, yeah. So I did, punched it up, boom, we're listening to him. 
So I said, come on outside now. So we go outside, and they saw us go outside, and they backed off. I said, Jace, I want to, you remember what they said on, on the conversation? He goes, yeah. I said, now I want you to look at the helicopter. You see a FLIR unit or a spotlight on it? He goes, no. So I said, so their story was they're looking for a lady three towns up in a gray car that threatened suicide by cop. Is there one great car in Boston? I said, <laughs> he laughed. I said, unless she wrote her name in glow-in-the-dark numbers on top of her hood. I said, I don't think they're going to find her. I said, Jace, they came. He was, so, he, so like I said, he's experienced this a few times. So, so what's he going to do? So we go back in, watch the game, go to bed. I go down to our bedroom. I turn on the light. My wife pops up on a bed. She goes, they came. I said, yeah, I know. I said, what'd they have to say? They said, they wanted me to give you a message. I said, what is it? She said, they're going to take me again. They just don't want you to be worried. I said, I'm not worried. And we went to bed like it was a normal thing. Okay? And I can tell you right now, when you look at her CV, you'll know why. They take her to the Akashic Records medical section. Because it all has to do with what she's going to discover, which is going to give us the ability to join our galactic brothers as long as we smarten up. And, man, I'll tell you what. If you've never been off this planet and seen what is out there, wow, it's just amazing. And the kindness of the beings that I've met the kindness, the 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 concern about the Ameri the, the the human civilization. I mean, it's just it's heartbreaking. Yet they care, okay? Because you see, that's the whole point. It's this whole thing, it's the life, the the universe, everything. The beginning. It's all about love. And and um, once we realize that, we accept. People for who they are, regardless of their color or their race or their language or their religion or anything. And, and that's where that's where we struggle. So <clears throat> as far as aliens, I have met uh, insect looking aliens um, that, that make jokes. OK, I've never met one that didn't have a sense of humor. Um, I've met some beautiful Nordic blondes types. It's just absolutely incredible, incredible beauty. It's just mind shocking. Um, oh yeah, the guys like uh, Chewbacca, except these guys were, they didn't have the curly on their hair. They were like, you know, short haired dog. But man, were they beautiful creatures. Um, it's, 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 I guess it really is. It overwhelms me just to try to remember these encounters and and how I was treated and what I was shown and things like that. But the kindness and love is to me is the key. So, so the only thing that I can figure, and trust me, I I had I had a real. Um, I'll tell you what happens. This happened to me too many times. I never realized it. Someone in the family is high up as an investigator in a state organization, and we, I, I, uh, I gave his dad uh, a murder case back in the 80s, um, salt, and he uh, ran with it, and it was wonderful. But um, I do that with a lot of the guys. So I, <clears throat> it was something that came up. We live near one of the biggest reservations in the Northeast, and I'll tell you what happened. One night, a while back, Two Russian mobsters uh, knocked off the leader of the mafia in Montreal and his son within 15 minutes of each other and took over. Okay, recently uh, they took out a uh, the mafioso up there that was uh, running big con a bunch of cocaine. And I'll tell you why they're here is because it's no man's land. The St. Lawrence River, all the islands. The reservation starts in Oka, which basically is right next to Montreal comes all the way down. So you can imagine their freedom and everything. So there's lots of stuff going on and everything. And uh, 
we knew that someone was laundering money. So something happened tonight that made me realize that something very strange with a certain banking institution. I don't want to get into it because I have to meet with them tomorrow. But guess what? Just like at HSBC, man. I don't know if you know that story, but you should. So, uh, yeah, that's how it comes. I'm not kidding. It just, and that comes from them. It comes from them. It comes from them because, from, I don't know, during end times, all truths have to be revealed. I don't know. I, I don't want to say that's that's what's going to happen or anything, but I've seen, I've seen that it could happen. Trust me. And uh, I've seen the, uh, the the devastation. And um, I don't want to see it. Okay, the torture. I got grandkids. I got a nine-year-old grandson who we went to like Placid this past weekend, who came up for a tournament. And I already know because I was shown. He played in the 1980 rink. Okay. So, uh, you know what a dream it is for kids playing in that rink if they play hockey. But the point is, he'll be on the Olympic team. And it's not because he's my grandson. It's it, when you when you see a a person that plays hockey that's so natural and is so much further ahead in skills and thought than his teammates, okay, you realize that that kid's destined to be somewhere. It's just like a young artist, a young singer. You know, everybody's giving gifts. Everyone's giving gifts, and these gifts are to be used and enjoyed and shared. Wow. So that's the reason why Scott's not the only one being visited. Ships are being photographed and videoed every single day of the week all over the world. They try to keep as much off the internet as they can because you see, it's game over for the, it, it would have to be game over for the ruling elite simply because in a, in a, in a, in a real society with, a, with the, with, with an open mind and with the, with intelligence uh, and, and and engaging in that intelligence, that we wouldn't be doing what we're doing to each other. And um, and like I said, you know, we're a genetic pool for a lot of these other uh, uh, species. And that's why people say, oh, they took a DNA sample from me or they molested me with that rod because they got you to do something and they collected that something and they use that with DNA. So, so. That's where we are. I mean, you know, we were taught up to believe that we're God's chosen people. If you're Jewish, I can tell you that story and how it began. But uh, if we're all mortal spiritual beings, which we are, I can guarantee you that. Um, that uh, no one's better than each other. Some of us are older, the whole nine yards, whatever. The universe is, is it are expanding and, and, and being populated in the whole nine yards. And why wouldn't you want to bring your Cadillac to the show instead of your junk car. You know what I'm talking about, okay? We have that capability in us to being that Cadillac. We know it. You know, we, we have compassion. We, you know, things happen to people in life and they can't deal with it and it twists them a certain way or it may cause them to become God forbid a murder or whatever. But the point is, it don't make any difference. We're all immortal spiritual beings. I tell you right now, hell, every time I asked about that, they laughed at me. Don't exist. They can make you think it exists because maybe they need to change where you're headed. I don't know. In fact, I do know. That's happened to a lot of people. All of a sudden, I mean, think think about this. Think about these people. They say that they met God. They sent. They met Jesus. What they met was an alien with such uh, more advanced powers that can make your mind think 
that's who you're talking to because that's who you needed to talk to to whatever happens next in your life so so aliens yeah they're real and uh i i will give anyone but what i have okay uh i i've open i've openly shared it uh, with with anyone who's asked um so I think we better be prepared to probably start interacting with with the aliens because in a, in the past they have come down after whatever happened with the pole shifts and they've helped humanity get going. That's why agricultural started when it did all of a sudden like that agriculture. We became agronomists. Um, no, that's a gift. So Gee, why do they want anybody's guns? Why? Tell me, how many people? I mean, I know 90% of the people that if they saw what I saw and they had a gun, they'd shoot them. Okay? Now, that doesn't go over too big with them. Um, so, I can understand why there are these pushes upon society. I can understand. Um, I, I taught where my uh, before my I even met my wife. I taught at a state institution for de developmentally disabled. Okay, and and um, my morning class, they all ended up getting jobs in the village. My afternoon Scott. class, yeah. What I'm trying to tell you, okay, is that the aliens are here for a reason. They are here in untold numbers. People are meeting them. But people are afraid to talk because people are going to say that person's crazy. Okay. But I'm not crazy. And you know I'm not crazy. So what we need to do is we need to share. We need to share this information that something is coming and something may happen, but it's not the end. And the aliens want us to know this. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone through everything they've gone. And they've offered us these gifts of longevity, of stopping time, and holding space. And that's the only way you're going to make it from one star system to the next. I don't give a shit what anybody else says. I know this for a fact. We do have some pretty fancy equipment out there. Not like this. Not anywhere near like this. Scott. Yeah. Yes. Stop, please. Yes. Um, yeah, it's not, I, e not easy to hear, is it? How do I get you back on track? Just tell me what you want. I, I, I I'm sorry, but you, you have to understand the emotions, the emotions. Uh, and I can recall those things somehow and, 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 and they take they take over. I mean, a couple times here, I've almost been in full tears, and I it can't help that. But if you just want me to, con I can concentrate. I'm very good at taking orders. Um, at, as far as um, if you want me to, you know, with the aliens, if you want me to explain anything specific, because uh, I can recall. All I it. want you to all I want you to do is go through your experiences one after the other, not okay. not your not your. Um, Interactions with humans about this and that. Yeah, well, just the actual onboard experience. On board experience. If I could cut every word out you've said. Okay. Except okay, now. your now. actual experiences. That's what I do. I, okay. I don't edit these things. So okay. people are consider going, when is he going to talk about aliens? Yeah. Well, um, okay. So experiences. I told you about the experience where they showed me Dolores Discovery. Okay. And where? And I've, I've told the government, and, and they know it's there, too. They know it's true, but they don't know what to look for. Um, the, uh, okay. Just go from one my, experience. My first another. experience was in 1970, where one came down near where I lived, and people got called out to be there before the guys from Rome, Griffiths, Air Development Center, or the guys from Plattsburgh could get there to haul it away. Okay, so 
from that point on, that's when you see something physical, right? That I knew. Okay, so I knew. Okay, definitely they exist, these things. Uh, I had seen strange things, especially the orbs, never understanding what they were. A red orb means you're protected. That's what they told me. That's why when I saw the red orb, I was woke up in the car driving states away. Um, so, so they use different technologies like that. Now, um, when I say red orb, I said I've I've seen blue orbs, I've seen green orbs, I've seen red orbs, I've seen white orbs do, and yellow orbs. Do you have any memory of onboard experiences? Okay, the 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 not that night where they injected me. There had to be some reason. The night uh, the, that was September, the July visit, definitely I have that. I explained that to you. I could I could draw them. They were and I that I had never seen a rod like that in my life. I've heard stories. Is that, is that the only on board experience? No, no, no. That was in July. So then the one where they did the injection, that must have been something they didn't want me to remember or whatever. Um, all I remember is the outside of the ship and studying those pieces. I remember entering the ship, but after that, I don't remember anything. Um, then the paranormal stuff started the very next night. And then these other crafts, which I'll show you, there, there are three of them, the different shapes, uh, started showing up. And uh, and what I can tell you is that um, I can remember being brought on board, seeing the beings like they're standing there waiting for you, and walking towards them and starting to talk. Now, this didn't happen on all of them. And then that's all I remember until I remember the white light hitting me in the face. And then all of a sudden I'm back uh, where I was on Earth. There are times when I, uh, they have brought me up and they were human form, beautiful beings, a little bit bigger frame than what we are. And um, the interior of the ships have gone from what I described like that white, um, a white, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like white quartz, but that lighted, the, the ceiling was the same and the, it lighted everything. But yet, the way it lit was just strange to me because everything else, all the solid objects in the you know the rooms, the the uh, control panels. I've seen control panels that are absolutely incredible. And and, and any time that I would ask what's that, they would explain it to me. Now, it's it it's just. Um, it's just like things that had to relate with what I'm supposed to create, I guess. But the thing is, everything had a relationship. I mean, interior ships. Uh, um, let me see. One night I was brought up by the human type uh, looking beings. And um, this was early on. And I said, you know, I said, why are you, why, why are you just, you know, looking just like you and me? I know that there's other beings and creatures. I said, I'm not afraid to be introduced to meet other aliens. I don't care what they look like. They said, really? I said, yeah. Oh my gosh. That night alone, over 70 of them, they introduced me to them. Um, from it, you know, like the Hopis talk about the ant people, they exist. A lot of creatures on Earth can kind of look like them in a way, and I'm talking about animal creatures, okay? But yet they're upright like we are, legs, arms, maybe not as many fingers. Um, you know, your appendages are not the same, but but you had legs and you had a body part. You may not have ears. Um, I know for sure that the the blonde alien looking ones. Uh, I know for sure that the um, 
at least the females are anatomically correct, okay? That's all I want to say about that. In other words, a female human anatomically would look the same, okay? Except these beings have perfected genetics because their skin, their hair, their teeth, their eyes, uh, uh, everything is just startling beauty, startling beauty, okay? So we might have a genetic tie with these beings. Um, there, um, there are other uh, um, alien creatures that, uh, well, like, like, let's put it this way, Al's not that far off the mark. Um, I've seen them look like owls, except a six foot Arctic owls. I don't think there's not too many of those around. Um, I have seen, um, what other types? Well, there, a lot of it is in, in ancient art too. Um, but we just don't, you know, I mean, the head shapes like a, like, like a, like a pointed round, you know, like it comes to a point down here and then rounds up like this good sized head, uh, elongated eyes. That was quite common and different shaped heads is quite common. Um, now I've seen in documents of these other ones that look like octopuses or something, but I never met any of those guys. From what I hear, you don't want to, but, um, but mainly, uh, in the, in the human frame. Now I can tell you right now, there are a few conversations that I can't share because I was told I can't share them. There'll be a time when you can, you can't share them. But mainly the conversations were concerning about humanity, the concern for humanity, um, certain things that have to that have to change and be done, and it can be done. Um, I mean, I, I, that's boiling it down to because everyone had, I don't care how many times I talked to different beings, there was always this expression of concern for humanity. Um, as far as uh, there's a few, there's a few other things uh, they've shown me that I said, "Wow, that's that's simple, that's easy." Um, but that'll come in time. Um, their crafts are something like we would never. I mean, I would have never expected something like this. I've flown in planes. I used to fly a plane. Um, I took my lessons. Um, traveled a lot. Uh, no, it's just, it's just totally, totally, totally different. When you're in a pl plane, you can feel the effects of movement. You can feel, uh, you know, uh, you, you're at a different elevation. The preservation is not the same and all that. You, you know, you're not, you're out of your environment. When you're in their crafts, whatever it is, it's just like you are here on Earth. In other words, there's nothing strange and uh, for me in any of the crafts I've been on that made my body feel uncomfortable. I don't understand the technology, but that's not the point. The um, oh. You, you want, I'll, I'll tell you about how they taught me about the technology to fold space, one of the things, okay? When they were folding space before the ship came out, a friend of mine from another agency was vacationing with his wife in Tohopuo Beach, Tahiti. It was nine o'clock their time, which when you go back six zones, three o'clock our time, okay? Here's what he told me. Because someone posted a picture of these, I don't know, 70 and 90 foot waves at Tehupaho Beach, Tahiti. No date or time. So me, I see that. Why did I see that very next day? So I put it out on the web to all my friends. Anybody know where this ship came from? My friend gets all of me, Scott, you're not going to believe this. So what? Tell me where they were. He said, we're sitting there, my wife and I. These guys stroll up. They got cameras. 
the scouting crew for the movie Point Break 2015. All of a sudden, Scott, these huge waves appeared. And they videoed them. They gave him his card, their cards. Okay. I said, really? Can you share? He goes, yeah. So I got a hold of him. Okay. I said, hey, those waves you got there, you did, you saw the other night. Okay? Where they come from? I said, what do you mean? I said, you guys are surfers? Yeah. In fact, I know the guy who built the surfboards for that movie, the movie series. I said, I blew his mind too. I said, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, look at, you took them at nine o'clock at night on the 15th of September, 2014. Okay, because you were scouting things. And all of a sudden they appeared and you took them. How'd you know that? I said, well, you guys are surfers, right? Yeah. Okay. So you ever go surfing on a fourth quarter moon? And that stopped them in the tracks because fourth quarter moon is a slack tide moon. Okay. That's why they come when the moon rises in the east. Because when they visit someone on earth, they got a fold space between the earth and the moon. The bottom plasma beam, it's like, a, you know, like multiple beams. The bottom plasma beam, when the moon's rising in the east, goes over the Pacific Southwest, the least populated part of the world. They don't want to hurt anyone, okay? So those waves were not destructive. But Mr. Johnson, when you see him in the end of that movie at 2.15, where they poorly CGI'd in every piece of equipment and character, yet they couldn't take out that pulsing, glowing plasma beam that was reflecting off the top of the wire on the right hand, the top of the waves on the right hand side of the screen. You see, they leave hints. Why did they lead me to all this stuff? Okay, well, because that's all part of it. So, they, so that's how they teach us. I don't know how they taught uh, Professor Majayevic, but how come he was the world's expert on colloidal attachment? You see, it's a gift for us. And it was used properly because we're on the space station. Um, so that that's how it happens. I automatically go to these areas that I've never been to in my life and and do the research and find exactly what they described. Um, it's almost like, uh, to be honest with you, sometimes I feel like like I'm a robot or something like, you know, you, you get up in the middle of the night with a special camera with uh, night shot equipment, a Blu-ray camera, and, and, and you, you go out and, and uh, you turn it on and all of a sudden, boom, you're filming, you're filming an angel or you're filming uh, a craft that's coming in, or you're filming colored orbs going across the sky. That's, that's what it was like. That's, that's what's happened to me. And, um, and I got the videos, and I got discs, okay? And I've got pictures, and I've got, okay? And I'm will, I've shared them with people. There's stuff on data that, that's not gonna be shared because it doesn't go there but that's you know um all i can say is that um <laughs> it's it's a, it's a life-changing experience and it, as, as far as i'm concerned i've talked to a lot of people who have come to me and and wanted to share their experiences and it's the same thing it's a life-changing experience it's not easy to deal with but somehow they help you get through everything as, I, I don't think from what I have met as far as different types of aliens, I don't think you can imagine, the, anyone can imagine the numbers of different intelligent life forms that exist in the universes. So when you ask about an alien, I can tell you they look like us. I've seen light beings. In other words, 
They have the ones that were in the bedroom a few nights ago. They have a ring. That's, that's the first time. They have a rainbow aura, okay? And I mean a rainbow aura, but it's not a solid rainbow. It's just the different colored lines of a rainbow. And they are a, their body is made of, you can see their body. You don't see organs or anything, but you perfectly shaped body, head, face, and appendages, but they are light beings. It's an energy force. It's, it's hard to describe. They come in different colors. Um, so I think, which, Um, I've met some, um, that, um, let's see. uh, there was a, I think there was a character in one of these, uh, Alf, Alf or something. It kind of looked like Alf, but the face wasn't exactly the same, but it was pointed, but their hair was all very, very dark and like a heavy hair, you know, up, up, the, the, the diameter of the hair was bigger than normally what what I've ever seen, um, but beautiful, almost like a silky black. Um, they had a sense of humor, trust me. Um, what are the types? Oh, the blue beings, the blue so light. Scott, beings. Yes. So um, you're going through various different pieces of information without actually putting them in the context of actual experiences. Okay, so what do you mean by an experience? I mean, they, well, they in, you, you know, <laughs> if you meet somebody, you say, I've met these guys that look like this and those guys that look like that, but you haven't actually gone through any of the experiences of actually meeting them. Oh, oh the experience of meeting them. Um, well, <clears throat> now you saw they can take you up on you saw okay. some light beings a couple days ago, right? Oh, yeah, you were in the bedroom on my okay. side of the bed. So maybe maybe a good uh, idea would just be to start going backward instead of going from the beginning forward because you kind of get off into their message and this and that. Yeah, I know. Maybe you should go backwards. Um, okay, and, so, so and one experience after another, okay. quickly. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I was. Uh, uh, I, I have to count backwards here. It was uh, about pretty close to seven nights ago, okay? Uh, I had been outside. I go out every night to, to see what I see and to thank them. And I came in, uh, got ready for bed, and I was in bed. My wife was still working on her project in her office across the hall from our bedroom. And I am laying in bed and just trying to relax, uh, get the dogs on the bed with us and um all of a sudden the lights were off and all of a sudden they just appeared and what i'm saying is that there i could the colors red there's red green um like an orange um a blue and then some other purplish and some other color but they're not they're not wide stripes they're just lines like that and the lines are like vibrating energy of light but they're different colors. And inside that aura or whatever it is, veil of those three colors, those rainbow colors is the shape, the energy shape of a being. And when I say these light beings, they're, they're so different from the blues because these you can actually see through, but you can see that they're there. Now, I know how, how, that's the only way I know to describe it. You can see the energy that they're composed of, and the energy is actually vibrating. How long were they with you? Oh, they were there. Uh, this is not the first time I'll tell you about the, the one before that. Uh, they were there. Um, they were there probably at least for I was awake and looking at them and, and saying, well, hello. <laughs> you know, I mean, what else are you going to do? And, um, and then... You know, it's just they they just came close and then all of a sudden, boom, you're out. So there was a reason why. What did they do? I don't know. From what I have been told from other experiencers, too, is that 
when they do that, they're doing something to you physically because you need it done. Some type of correction, some type of whatever. I don't know. And but so, they, so they came, they came. They came. They were there. They got close to you. You were out. But yeah, I mean, first they acknowledged. They acknowledged that I knew they were there. Okay, and they and and then they make you feel they come and they're out. Okay, so now, the last time they were in our bedroom was probably about nine months ago. We got a huge one of those California kings, okay? And um, the bedroom is not real big, but it's big enough to have different furniture in it and all that. At about 2.45, for some reason, I'm, I, I wake up and I sit up, which disturbed my wife and she woke up and, and what's, what's the matter? And, and I'm looking at three of them at the ed, end of the bed, you know, the board, and then the three of them standing there. And I said, Laura, do you see him? She goes, yes, I do. Okay, so we're, sti we're sitting there, and again, what you're seeing is that energy, white energy thing, but you're seeing the red, uh, the, the colors of the rainbow in lines that are like vibrating, okay? And the one in the center was a little bit taller than they had one on each side. Okay, so we're just we we you know we're just staring at this beauty and and the feeling that we have, and then the next thing I know, this big green orb, a light green color, comes waltzing through the wall, and in the center of the orb is a square box or a square shape. Okay, so that came in and went right behind the three beings. Okay. And that's the last Laura and I remember. Okay. And the, the similar experience prior to, prior to that that you mentioned a minute ago. Yeah, the same being so because you, that, it's unmistakable to see that that okay. that. Same. Okay, well, that, tell tell us about the previous experience that you just. Okay, had. so so I, I'll try to work backwards from there. The last one that is so vivid, okay, is. Uh, we were in, uh, where were we when that happened? Oh, that was, that was, this vivid one was uh, 15, 215. Um, her office, it was a huge bedroom in the house, and her office was in the bedroom. And um, I, I've had 21 major surgeries. I've been shot three times. So I uh, was still recovering from that trauma. So I, I, I'll go to bed early, you know, and uh, Laura's 21 years younger than I am. So um, I'm laying in bed and talking to my wife, you know, just, and then all of a sudden she turns around. She said, I was gone. Okay. And I know for a fact that now this place had uh, another story above it and it had a metal roof, okay? So what happened was they used that light technology and it just, boom, I'm up on the ship, okay? I'm greeted by two normal looking in, in they kind of like wear uniforms, I guess I'd have to say that because there's 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 no fashion show on on alien ships. Let's put it that way. Every time that I have been with a certain group of aliens, sometimes there's there's two or three different types of aliens on a ship, but their their outer gear or clothing, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same for everybody. Okay. Now, on one ship, because this, this, I have to say this because it brings back that memory. Um, this one ship, this, it was another type of, of like us, but, but beautiful uh, blonde beings and everything, okay? <laughs> I know for a fact that they actually wore on their bottom part like a um, Scottish kilt. 
Okay. And I'll tell you why I know that for a fact. Because one beautiful bond female showed me. Okay. I'm not kidding you. There's the anatomically correct thing I was telling you about. They wanted us to know that for some reason. There's more to it, but I can't elaborate on that because there's something going on about it. Um, so, so none of them have I've ever seen wear the same thing. Okay. In other words, different ships that I've been on. Everyone on that ship had the same type of, of like, I would say uniform. Okay. Um, even when there were mixed beings on the ship, they still had the same type of uniform. Um, so back to that night. So I, so I'm up and these guys were normal. And when I say normal, you and I looking tight, probably wrong thing to say, but, um, and I get, I get brought into this room where other people are sitting around a table and, um, I'm greeted and um, it's like, I'm telling you, it's like I knew him. I don't know how, how else to explain it, except that we'd sit down and, and, and then a discussion starts about that things people don't want to know about or hear about. And, and, and it's back and forth and I'm asked questions and, and what do I think about this or what do I think about that? And, and it just seems so natural that this conversation is going on, but I don't have any explanation. How can you explain that, that, that you're taken up on an alien craft and you're brought into a room where there's a meeting and there's a whole bunch of people that apparently we all know each other and you sit down, you're given something to look at, whether it's a document, it's a folder or whatever, and all of a sudden the discussion starts and then you're part of the discussion. You don't know why. And that is the truth. That's happened several times. Until you finally, they realize you can't take any more of this confusion. And then they take you up. Okay. With beings that you're very comfortable with, which means because we're prejudiced as humans that look like us, okay? It's easy to be with people that look like us. And they explain to you why, why you're here. It was your decision. It was your decision to come to earth once again as a messenger because the humans got atomic bombs Dolores Cannon explains that the three ways of volunteers in the new earth. Okay. So they explained to me why, why, because I volunteered to do this and because I've been with these people and worked with these people in my past. And that's why they know. And that's why they agreed for this to happen. And it's happened to too many of us and we don't know it. And that's a problem. So that's that's the reason, okay? So 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 now I understand why I can enter a room with people that should be strangers that are not on an so, alien craft and 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 engage in a conversation about humanity. That's why. So they told you why you were here, and that yeah. was the end of the. That was yes. Anything else that happened on the, in that encounter? Yes. So now. Um, the only time I can remember the surgical gear and everything is when they took the DNA sample. I and mean, I explained that and it's, it, it's, it, it was, it was, it was so traumatic to me to think that someone would have been in that part of my body and they knew it and they laughed at me. But the thing is, is that that's why it was like, uh, I wanted out. I didn't want to be there. Okay, they knew that. So you're jumping to a different different experience. Yeah, that's the one that I told you about that happened in July. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me go back to the March visit. St. Patrick's Day, 
uh, St. Patrick's Day 2014. For the first time ever uh, that I got to watch the CNN special in the Gardner Museum robbery. I'm sitting home all alone, Laura's in grad school across the street. And I thought I fell asleep. Okay. Then I wake up and the program's done. And I pick up one of my investigative law books and I write out everything about the Garden Museum from where it was heard to what vehicle was used as a getaway to a whole bunch of other things um, and who did it and all that stuff, the whole nine yards, where the paintings are, the whole nine yards. How's that happen? I was sitting in Potsdam, New York, okay? So then I asked for the explanation, and the explanation was, this is part of your mission. Secondly, secondly, think about all the, the coincidences with this organization and you, and thinking about your family and your daughter, and, you know? There's no coincidences in life, okay? And, 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 and so, you know, that those things that were borrowed, well, guess what? They were visited. They were on the list of master painters. It's a cultural gift. They should be back where they belong for everyone to see it and to wonder when they look at it. Makes sense to me why someone can be so amazing at art or music. That's another field I can give you tons of proof on, even their own admissions. Okay, okay. Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Um, you need to hear this. Coldplay admitted about them having a UFO experience. Chris didn't know what happened. Chris gets interviewed by uh, Howard Stern live. Howard says, "Chris, your music and your lyrics are incredible. Where do you get them?" Chris goes. If you watch the video, he goes, I get him from the universe. Okay? He does. Didn't know how. He does now because I explained it to him. Finish that one experience and then go which to one? The, one which one. The one that you got off track on. The pre, whichever. The, uh, one, the garden one? Whichever one you did. Okay, so, finish. so, so, so I, so I, you know, like, um, Oh, another thing they told me, they said you already had all the clues, but you just didn't want to realize it because your daughter's part of the family. So the point is, <clears throat> OK, they know how much trauma through these experiences that humans can take. OK, because it can be traumatic because it is so different. Just being in their environment, in their presence is so different than being here on earth with everybody. It's, I, that's the only way I can explain it. It's just, it's like you're in two different worlds. The feeling, the feelings that you have, your ability to understand and comprehend, it's not the same when you're here. But when you're with them, it's just an incredible experience. So they said to me, they said, now go back and do your job, okay? You've had all this information, but you didn't want to face it. And so I did. That was that trip. Um, and that was St. Patrick's Day. The so next one I, I told you, the for, next for, I remember was July. Stop for a second. Yeah. Before you go to the, before you go to the next experience. So you've died, you've been, uh, you've had three near-death experiences, right? Uh, yeah, until I fell off the greenhouse six weeks ago. But um, okay, so hold on. Uh, so I I've already heard, or we've already heard, how you had those. The part that people are always interested in, you don't necessarily talk about it, and that is what it's like on the other side, outside of your body. So, do you remember any of that? Of course, I remember any of that. What's it like outside your body? Watching your body fly through the air and take two more rounds. Okay. No, 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 not, not, not immediately around you. I'm talking about when I say out of your body. I don't mean like right when you got knocked out of your body. I'm talking about 
did you ever go on beyond your immediate environment and remember what was it like over there? That's uh, my question. Yeah, yeah. Many, many, many times. Uh, well, I've, shared, us, I've shared, uh, I've shared with Laura, but I'll share it with you. Okay. The first one, the first one was the first week after the September visit, okay? All of a sudden, I'm flying through space, okay? I am looking, I'm flying through space, looking at things that with, with, with just wonderment, not even realizing that what's going on until I set foot on this planet, a different planet. And, and I think people call that astral travel or whatever, but being out when you, when I was outside like that, which I, which has to be your, your, your ethereal body is, is taking that, that, uh, journey but you're okay. you're talking you're talking about when you ask for travel right yeah it's okay. it's uh it, or when or when they take you up ethereally okay number one when i have every time i've been out of my body even in the ndes you have you ha, you're you judge nothing okay in other words you don't look at anything even though you see something bad going on you don't see it as bad or you don't have that feeling like we do when we when we see an animal get hit or whatever you know that uh, no there's none of that uh and and it is so there's no judgment you don't judge other people or anything um i've never felt anything so wonderful in my life and i've known a lot of women the thing is, where on, when you're outside of the body like that, you, you you're existing as who you really are, and you the feeling of love is just wow, it's just amazing, and that's that's what really gets me. I mean, because I can draw back into those experiences and, and actually feel what my body felt like and it and it it, it makes me it not it doesn't make me uh tear up in in, in uh in uh, sadness it, it's i'm tearing up in the joy of it uh, amazing so can you actually go through one of those experiences where you were um you know way beyond the physical uh, world and you experienced that um, that great love. Can you go through any any of those experiences that are not directly tied to your here? You know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> trying to think. <clears throat> I tell you why it's hard right now. I, but I I'll do it. It's just I have to settle things down. It's like when it happens so many times. That it's not new anymore. Okay. That's basically the only way I can try to explain it. So to me, when they do this, when they have this interaction to me, it's natural because it's happened so many times where they let me remember and they show me things and they let me get photographs with, with the right type of equipment. And the, why did I buy that piece of equipment years ago? Everything happens for a reason. So, so here's how I really finally got it. October 2014, same house where we were visited in September. I'm laying in the bed, or is at her desk. I'm gone, physically gone. They greet me, good, boom. White light hits me. Laura said I popped back in bed. Boom. She turned around and said, where'd you go? I started to tell her. She said, then you fell asleep. But what really happened is they brought me up etherly. Okay. Boom. I'm in that same beautiful room with them. And didn't skip a beat in the sentence of the conversation. Word for word, right to the teeth. And who is them? 
Who is them? The blue yeah, light beings. Look the like, what do they look like? Oh, well, they'll, they'll just like uh, blue light being, like Bill describes, but but again, kind of translucent, but just like just like our bodies, they got feet, they got legs, arms, they got head, you know, shoulders. So, but they're but it's you can see through them, it, but it's a beautiful dense energy that you see through, but they're there. So, so I'm up here now. I'm up here as in as I learned, I'm up etherally. So we're talking, but then I look and then I I stop and I go, I, I can't see any part of my body. And I look at them and then boom, the light hits me. And I wake up and I start talking to Laura. And then she said, boom, you were gone again, physically. So I'm back up now within minutes or seconds of, of the, the second time. And continuing the conversation okay but you know what happened boom the light hit me in the face because i looked and saw my appendages come back or said boom the bed goes boom turns around i'm asleep again it took me up etherly that time i got it so i said to them I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. We are immortal spiritual beings because when I can't see a part of my body, it's not there. Yet I can talk, I can feel, I can hear. They said, thank you. It's about time. Okay? You know what that did to me? You know what that, 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 that made me free. That made me know that I'm supposed to share what I experienced and try to help people to understand, to get rid of the fear. That's that's a big thing, okay? Because when you are out of this body, you think you're in heaven. That's how good it feels. That's the only way I can explain it. Okay. Um, go through uh, another experience, either go back one or whatever. Okay. Um, keep going. Keep going. I, I, keep, I, I, focus so, on the experiences. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, here's another one. Um, beings, uh, both Laura and I, I, I mean, we both saw each other, you know, we were looking at each other and we both saw each other go up. It wasn't the first time. But this one I have clear, it's so clear, it's unreal. So they get us on the ship. They're 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 they look like us. That's all I can say. Okay, there was no oh gee you look funny or you don't have three fingers or whatever. Um, and then this guy greets us and this lady greets us. The lady, the guy, Laura's talking to the guy like she knew him every day. And they leave and they go to another part of the ship. And then the late and I got to tell it because it's true. The, uh, the lady takes me by the hand, and boy, was she beautiful, and she brings me in the other room. She wanted me to do something in the sexual nature. Now, I don't know if this was a test or whatever it was, but this is exactly what happened. Okay. She made it perfectly clear what she wanted me to do. And that's how I learned about the anatomical part, okay? Because she shoved my head into it. Now, I think this was a test because I reared back and I said, no. She said, why? I said, Laura's in the other room, honest to God. And then, boom, we were both sent back. Now, what is that other than a test? Serious, that's what happened. So, so I'm not surprised that some, some of the things that people say about their experiences, because I'm sure People will say that about mine, but I don't really care because it's true. That's what happens. 
and and there's I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people. I know people in my area that have come to me and said, Scott, you know, okay. I know you're telling me. So Go through another experience. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Grand Canyon one. That that's the first time that I know. They took us both up. We we had we had a suburban back then, and uh, when we traveled, um, we we stayed and met a lot of friends or stayed in hotels. But we 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 knew we were going to go camping. We loved to go camping, so we had a mattress in the back and all our gear and everything. So we're sleeping in the back of this thing. Now across from the that that campsite, uh, this one we were at, the Grand Canyon, the airport down there, because there's an airfield at Grand Canyon. Okay, so. Um, we go to bed, and then boom, they got us both up on this beautiful ship. But they said, well, Laura's, uh, Laura's going to go somewhere else, but don't worry about it. Okay, basically, that's what they said. So that's the first time that from when she got back, she explained it to me. They bring her to this, wherever it is, the, the Akashic Records, where they have everything, but, but it's a uh, when you think you want to know about something, all you do is go like this and it appears in a holographic and everything is there. It's visually and somehow telepathically explained to you. And that's when you see your CV, you'll understand that. Um, so, but see, they brought us both up because A, they didn't want us probably to worry, but also they, they were... I think gradually teaching us basically what our mission is, and 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 that's all I can. I, I just really think, why why would we be taken so many times if they weren't prepping us for something? That's you know usually people get visited once, and just like number one forty nine said to me, three days after the third visit. Visit, I was visited one time. She told me exactly about it and she explained the light beings. She'd never seen them before. I, had, I never said anything to her. She didn't even know. She didn't even recognize me. So, and she, she used to babysit my kids. I'm serious. This is like 20 years before. But the thing is, <clears throat> she's the one who said about the other thing. No one knew that. No one knew that they stuck something in my head and they took a DNA sample, but she did. Now, tell me. How that happens, it only can happen is because whatever they do to us, whether it's an implant, oh, you got to see the x-rays I have of my head. It's not just the 38 bullet fragments that are still there, but these other things that should never have been there because the bullet fragment never went there. So, yeah, we've got that proof. So we do have implants for some reason. Their technology is so much higher than ours. It's just unreal. I don't even care to understand it, to be honest with you. But yes, we do have implants for a reason. People have them. Okay? I, I can show them. I'm, there's some that, that are visible on my body. So, so, they, um, so, they, so that visit, it was just, my part was just to be made comfortable. Because they knew I, I was going through a lot of basically internal trauma just trying to understand everything and now they're taking Laura okay so that's why a couple of times they brought us up together and and I was just made very comfortable and just conversation with people that it's just like I said it's just like it's just like oh I saw you yesterday and we grew up together that's the close relationship, what I'm talking about, that is so hard to understand because it even happens with the ones that look something out of a horror movie, and I'll be honest with you. But I was never afraid. And you know what? They were the better jokers, honest to God. I mean, when I say jokes, I, they're like us, you know? They so, love humor. They love. It's part of love. It's part of love. Is the humor. Go through another. So, experience. Yeah. Okay. So. 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 So they told me again, and so they took her, and 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 I thought that was it, but then that night they returned in Boston. 
they took her, but they also wanted her to give me the message that they were going to take her again. So I would be comfortable and wouldn't worry. So, so that's part of their interaction. Um, let me see this. I have to put it back to where I was when it happened. Oh, I'll go way back, way back. For the very first time ever, I got to stay in my grandmother Varden's house overnight because my uncle Bobby and I were going into camp to go fishing the next day. But uncle Bobby was an engineer at the power plant at the mill. And something happened to his second shift replacement, so he had to spend an hour or two till the guy could get to work. My grandmother Varden was the mid midwife or the junction, they called it, the lower part of the village where the railroads came. And she got called out for birth. So here's 10-year-old Scott. I was always scared of the dark, not anymore. But the and I know the reason why is because that's when they visit you. When you're young, you're afraid of it. So I'm upstairs in the bedroom, terrified. Grandma's not home and Uncle Bobby's not home. I've never been in this house. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I'm laying in bed. A lot of times you think you have a nightmare, whatever, an experience. Okay. So here's what happened. I'm laying in bed. The door frame. Okay. I think they're one by sixes or something. In any event, the door frame, white. All of a sudden, all along of the outside of the door frame are leprechauns. Okay. The full garb with swords, a hat. So you wonder why I thought this was a dream or a nightmare. And then on the inside of the door frame, all the way around the two sides of the top are these like ogres or whatever you want to call them. But everybody's got swords. And then, so after everything appears, all of a sudden one of the guys up top, he takes his sword and he grazes it like that. Then all of a sudden, all the all the uh, leprechauns are sword fighting these other ugly guys on the inside, and at the same exact time, they all stabbed them, and the bad guys fell down, and the leprechauns put their swords up like this, and they all cheered. Now, why wouldn't you think that was a nightmare? Okay. Finally, I fall asleep, and Uncle Bobby comes home, wakes me up. I said, Uncle Bobby, I had such a terrible nightmare, and I told it to him. He goes, yeah, I guess you did. Next morning, we went into camp and went fishing. Now, that visit, the first one in Maynard for my granddaughter. Again, hockey game. Jason and I are Boston nuts. Ours in bed. I go downstairs to get a dry, turn on the light wake her up and we talk about what happens because she knows it's real and she felt bad that Jason and I had an argument well so we're laying there and guess what happened again all of a sudden they appeared like there was a door frame at the end of the room and the same exact thing happened okay and Laura says I remember that story. And we were watching, I'm, we were watching it. And uh, when I say a sense of humor, okay, so, so the leprechauns win once again. Don't forget, that's the night the red worm came down on top of the house. And this is what happened. <laughs> the head guy, he comes up to me and he said, he said, You've you've been protected all your life. How many guys been shot three times, once in the head, right? You, you, Twenty-one major surgeries, band disease. <laughs> this is what he said to me. He said, "You idiot!" I swear to God, but he didn't say it in a mean way. He said, "Red orbs means you're protected." Okay, guess what happened? Laura was right there. Okay, so. So, yes, that's how they work, because they're interventional and they can appear. And not 
they can appear to you too, but it's got to, there has to be a reason to do it. Because Laura didn't get an injection in her head. I can tell you that right now when she saw him. It's not the first time. There's a way that you can do, that all of us can, because I've been teaching a few people what I've learned or what they've taught me of how you can experience them. Okay? So, so that's what they had to prove to me. Okay? So maybe, maybe all these visits where I, there's conversations and there's technical stuff reason, maybe it's because they're trying to prove something to a human mind that um, has been through a tremendous amount of trauma in his life, but a human mind that's not capable of dealing on their leg, so they have to do it in an easy way. It's almost like being nursed, okay, and weaned off the bottle or whatever. But the point is, you, at any time that, that I have been taken and, and, and uh, I mean, I, I've conversed with them uh, in, in, on earth, if they when they appear, but any time, it's only a little bit of what you experience and what you're told and shown, because I think, and I they they kind of back me up on it, is that the human mind, in this present state that we are, we know the truncations of the genes and all that shit, who f- who fused the first and second chromy, but the human mind can't take such a change in reality without probably having some side effects. For me, you know what it is? I use music and I use humor. That's how I deal with what's been going on. Because we can't, we can't comprehend what's out there. We can't comprehend the danger that's out there, we can't comprehend the love, the protection. Me, um, that it, like sorry, uh, you have another light. You know, you know, it needs to go out. Yeah. Okay. I need yeah. To yeah. Anyway, you getting paid for all this, Michael? I gotta run. You bet. Yeah. So, yeah. so he has so, a dog. He's a, my dog is dying. Okay. Okay. My dog's dying. He needs help. And my husband thinks he's he's gonna pay for this, right? Good. Bye. See you later, sweetie. Be involved. Right. Um, Our show's over. Uh, yeah. Thank you, you for know, coming on. I, you know, I, I, um, I've got a lot of written material, and um, because after I have a visit, I do write it. So I don't know if, if you what, how you want to do it, because I know. I, I gotta go. I gotta okay. Go. So listen, you, you know that you can call me anytime, or anything, you know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on my show. We'll we'll do this some other time. I will send you some stuff. 